Winter Split, we were not looking that dominant compared to Winter Split. I think we just play a bit worse, maybe a bit more cocky. Coming into playoffs now, we really wanted to make sure that we don't do the same mistakes. Frescaui! Again, turning the play back! Super trying to fire back! He can't pull the feathers back! He's down! G2! They bring the game back in their favor! In VGS, we like to meme a lot that we're actually mental controlled by G2. <laughs> because every time we face them, usually it's, uh, not a lot of good thing happens. But for sure, at some points, we'll just overcome. You comes in safe today! LeBron flips him out once again! Penta kill for Ice as he cleans up the fight! People could stop fearing us, but I think whenever we go on stage and play versus them, we're probably still gonna beat them. It's 20 minutes! They're already going to MSI, but they want spring as well! The PDS from winter is not the same as in spring. G2 cannot damage us like they did before. <laughs> Just like winter, we're gonna beat you guys again. Just like winter, those are the expectations as G2 versus BDS. Our upper bracket final begins. My name's Sterks, and Dagda will be alongside me to take you through to see if history can be changed. But so far, a lot of people expecting G2 to be just as dominant as they have already been. Coming through Mad 2-0 and Fnatic 2-0 on the same line. They haven't even dropped a game in playoffs so far. They look like a different beast. You kind of heard it from BB as he was chatting over that little intro video saying, hey, look, we wanted to smooth out our gameplay, make sure we're not playing as cocky. And you can see the results there. They look absolutely fantastic. So going to be an uphill battle here for BDS, as the desk was alluding to. Yet to ever beat G2 in a best of series. But we'll have to see if they can rewrite history here today. Shock set on the desk. 18 and 3 is the record now. Also for that, while we are on the G2 hype train, just a note, they have dropped two individual games from winter to now. Now, that's not the regular season, of course, we're talking just in playoffs. Winter playoffs and now spring playoffs, two individual games. And they're both in the winter playoffs. As we said, they've already come through so dominant through this said spring. And as we're now in this final round, G2 have already hit MSI. We've stated that before. They locked in MSI, they won winter itself. They are now just fighting for the seeding here and trying to get in yet another championship. As we get into pick and ban for this upper bracket final, it's gonna be a doozy. So we're already getting some of those pocket picks out of the way, Dagda. You and I talking off camera. The series, hot topic at the moment, but the Draven against Han Sama can also be set historically. It's been a massive pick for Ice with the Zeri coming through. We even heard the death talk about it. He's got a pentakill to his name on that champion, so not surprised. See that taken away, especially when you look towards Han Sama, has been more likely to go back towards the, you know, the Lucian Nami combo, something along the lines of a Jinx. So just making sure that the Zeri doesn't poke her head in to be a nuisance does make a lot of sense when BDS tend to rely on that late game team fighting that Ice brings. I like the Twisted Fate ban as well. Across the world right now, we are just seeing it paired into something like the Rek'Sai. Seeing into, into a lot of top lanes, even blind sometimes as well, getting away with it. Blista also taken away. Another strong bottom lane from Han Summer as Broken Blade instantly locks in that Rel. That flex that I think for G2 that they can use so well. Yeah, Rel is just so incredibly strong, especially in the jungle. She just does so much work, but there are a lot of things that are still up and available. You know, you look at things like the Rumble, um, and we've seen come through. The Azir has been something that's crept up quite a bit, but we know from recent matches that Caps is willing to bring out the Aurelian Sol, so maybe not trying to highlight that as much. Ari has definitely been a very strong pick over the course of our um, of our playoffs, so maybe seeing that locked in here for Nuke. But instead, when the Zeri's taken away, we get the virus early on. This was the pick we were just talking about before, the Rek'Sai. You know, again, I just want to highlight with things like the Ari being looked over. Remember, Shao's played a lot of Vi. You know, it's one of his favorite champions. We see it consistently. Won't talk about it now, but I just want to get to it in a second. That Rek'Sai, though, again, huge first pick priority across the world as well. Yeah, Vi is banned away, so I imagine we'll probably get the rel or Good there is point. the opportunity to i wasn't sure if they wanted to go for the jarvan here so swap the rel into the bottom side take the jarvan and just go hey you have a virus very mobile lady carry we've seen it work out incredibly well over the last couple of games but our the games yesterday but not actually going to be the case maybe looking towards a bit more of a carry juggler the diego the zinzao maybe take the ari itself for cops if you really want to but yeah i mean you've a ton of options here for g2 at the moment but a mobile lady carry for mobile lady carry is the end of the world when it comes to the trades. Yep, a bit of range added in, in there as well. So Hans is going to be the scaling element. Now let's see if that rel is going to be shown now to what position or if we get something in the jungle instead. That's supportive. Mickey not going on an engage. Straight away they show that that is a rel jungle. 
This will be sick though. Yeah, they're gonna go for it. So gonna just say, hey, look, you have no engage now. We're gonna bring out this double AD carry bot lane and really try and put the pressure down onto you. And Sheo taking the volley bear as well means that he's got incredibly strong dueling in the early stages. Very few champions that can really match that. And with the long range poke and engage that BDS offer with this double AD carry, it's gonna be kind of tough to find the aggression that you want in that bottom side to try and fight back against them. We've walked away from a lot of these lanes, though. I mean, Ash has been open for a bit, and a lot of the, the Western teams were not picking up the Varus. Ash, we know how strong it is in the East again to reference, but that 2v2 will be a test for BDS to see how much they can take away in that bottom side. When we also mentioned that Han, Summer, and Mickey in the regular season, you know, again, it was a few and far between, sorry, in the spring playoffs. I also think it means that you need Caps to be on something that can control mid lane to try and get down into that bottom side to try and disrupt this. Right. Because I think what you'll see here is BDS go for the Ari, try and say, hey, look, we don't really mind, especially with the Nico, the LeBlanc fans, take the Ari, have that shove in the mid lane, even if Caps goes for the Azir, Ari still wins out in the early trades. And then you end up in a position where Nuke can start to roam down. Support potential dives here, especially with a Volley Bear in tow. That four man dive is so strong for BDS and you're just setting up perfectly for it so uh, maybe Caps has something in his back pocket but actually no they're going to go for the Azir so I can see Caps taking the flip side of it taking that Ari for himself and then saying hey I can control mid yep. and I can come down into this bottom side to try and help out Hansam and Mickey as they're getting shoved in because it's kind of all that's left isn't it look at the mid lane bands taking away four in total here from this pool Azir was obviously the safe choice that BDS were angling towards anyway and that's another element of that range. As you said, Dagda, maybe Caps just takes a trade or maybe G2 show us the Scion first. But Broken Blade and that Aurelian Soul we mentioned, you know what? I have a feeling that Caps and Han Sam are going to be the damage dealers because everyone else is just a unit in the way. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, the, the, the foundations that the G2 house is going to be yeah, built up yeah. with the rest of the quad there. But Lulu works very well here. Same for the Jinx, making sure they're able to keep people alive. And you've got a very strong frontline engage coming through from Yike and BB. So I'm excited to see how they try and set up for these team fights. But it does mean that at least in the early stages. Yes, you can guess uh, Caps on the roams with the Aurelian Sol. He will still get pushed in this mid lane, but I still think you've got a huge amount of mid jungles control for BDS here, where you can have Volley Bear play down into this bottom side, help out Ice and Labrov, and just try and open up this game through the bottom half of the map. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Ice can start popping off the new addition of Team BDS, coming into a best of five here, and our first of our season in spring. Remember, we've been BO3s, up until now, and G2's been waiting a hell of a lot of long while. You know, BDS as well, after coming off their win of Vitality, we've been running through the lower bracket, seeing who can make the run themselves. And Attic Vitality will be coming up next as well, but first we find out who starts off in the finals. In our top three, G2 versus BDS is 18 and three in favor of G2. They've never won a best of series. That's best of three and best of five. G2, not only dominant in the region, but dominant in the matchup consistently in the past couple of years over BDS. I think a lot of that comes down to the way G2 play the mid game. It feels like they have been the kryptonite for BDS. Oh, but yeah. BDS, this is where you need to step up. A different style with this double AD carry bot lane. Can <laughs> they finally take down their demons in G2 as we get ourselves into game number one? Ladies and gentlemen, do you believe BDS fans need to come out in force? G2 are obviously firm favorites here in EU for a reason as our match of the week kicks off. Firm favorites within the matchup, firm favorites within the region. But BDS, we know them as such a great team fighting team. It was frustrating because against Vitality, as they go for this deep invade, they were pulling off these great team fights. Now using the power of Lebrov with Ghost available, Mickey gonna spot this out. Lebrov getting a volley out as well, but BDS only assume their don dominance but will they actually be starting at the red buff is the next question. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing them try and split the map here. You give that control to Ice and Lebrov, and at least with the early vision control going down, they will be aware of exactly what the, the plan of action is here. But in the early stages, we've seen Caps, as long as you play very aggressive on the Aurelian Sol, you can get control of the push in the early stages. So Sheo going up towards his top side means that there's very little likelihood that Sheo can really contest in towards this bottom side of the map to go for any of these jungle camps. I, I wonder if they're going to counter-invade. You have a lot of CC. Sion in a brush is deadly. Sheo spotted out through mid. 
G2 are hovering around the top of the vision here. Watch this play as Sheo has skirted through the brush, so BDS might be able to collapse. Ice and LeBrov are here. They don't expect it, and Mickey has to flash away. Now Yike and Broken Blade are in trouble. Flash from Yike. Caps tries to breathe, but he can't. Nork and Broken Blade decimating smash down. That is first blood given over to Ice. So smart from BDS here in the opening of game one to skirt around that vision controllers for Mickey as well. LeBrov chasing him down, but Yike is still here. It's a bait. There's Ignite. Heck flash over the wall to help out, but Mickey is one more auto away and eventually dies. Yike can't follow up. LeBrov gets the kill. Two for BDS to open up is even better than one. And then we end up with a lane swap here as well for G2. They were trying to move Hand Time and Mickey up towards that top side for Halo LeBrov. The crash down though, I mean, LeBrov may be a little bit greedy. Decimating Smash not in the right spot. He chains it back. Shao now coming in as well. This level one Ash still a pain as Yike is dismounted for the time being. Shao flashes over, looking for a third. We'll find it. Broken Blade just came back to lane. He walked in here, trying to help out his jungler as LeBrov now dies as well. Four kills and he had to give us more. I hope it shows what the series is going to be like as the voice of light follows through the next tick onto Shao as he's out of range. But Caps and Broken Blade aren't giving up now. Nuka's walking away. Flash. Decimating Smash still gets the slow. Caps now again out of range though, as G2 only find one back, but it's BDS in the early game with almost a 1k goal lead after that symbolic play. It's a Fiesta, and Mickey <laughs> wants to keep it going, taking Wait. a good chunk of damage off Adam, but He's this, is, bot. this is the thing, we're getting so much movement on the map, it's really hard to try and take stock of where we're at, right? Because what ended up happening was Ice had to reset after that initial trade. Yes, he got the kill, picks up the boots, but he then goes topside to try and match because Hansam and Mickey had gone for a lane swap, wanting to escape Ice and Leprov. But as a result, means that Ice then has to go back to the topside to try and get the control that he needs. But we're gonna have a quick replay here of this early setup and Ice and Leprov, good call. Expecting the change of lanes coming through from Mickey and Hans Sama. So with the early control and the numbers advantage here on the top side, with Hans Sama just trying to walk into lane with the minion wave on top side, they're able to get a couple of these kills. And then Abrov is like, cool, I can just be a complete nuisance here and make sure that I'm able to keep control. So we are having ice solo farming now on that top side, trying to match a lot of the early CS that Hans Sama was able to pick up. And now he's going to reset and try and catch this wave as Adam clears it out and move back into the bottom side. So it is a little bit of a weird start here on oh, both yeah. sides, but you can already see, like, just look at the gold on your screen. With the early kills that Shao has, he's in the lead. And with the early kill, Ice has that lead as well. I wonder what happens with Bot, though, with Yacht coming in now. He's about to hex flash with the wave in a bad spot, calls it off. You know, we haven't seen Aatrox AD carry before, but I'm just going to call it now. It has to be coined that as we still wait for Yike to move in with this big wave. I don't like it, though, because the problem is Ice is trying to crash this wave. Okay, gets it now. He has to reset, because the whole point of you picking Varus and Ash is to say, hey, we have push power, we have the stronger lane matchup, but we haven't really seen that come to fruition. Now, the good news for Ice is, well, he actually just gets a level advantage, right? Because yep. it's been Aatrox who's been sharing that experience, he actually has the level four already hit as he moves down into the bot lane. Should be just about in time, I believe, to pick up this wave in the bot half of the map as well. So you will be able to get Ice and Labrov moving back into a very advantageous position in this bottom side of the map, especially with the Pope Fires coming out. But where do Hans and Mickey go? Because they could easily just go back up to top side because both BB and Hans and Mickey are all resetting. Oh, really good. Yeah, they are. They're swapping. Here we go again. <laughs> I love it. I mean, Broken Blade uses teleport before as he moves down. Yike is, I don't care about Yike through camps because everything else is chaos. The moment Jungle's doing normal stuff is, is okay. But yeah, bot going top tagged, as you said, Adam just made the reset and they're like, hang on a minute, let's just keep uh, let's keep doing the switcheroo. So the early game, even though it's still going in BDS's favor, G2 is still trying to move the status quo as grubs are gonna be started. The thing is though, G2, yes, you're kind of matching a lot of us, uh, or sorry, G2 are the ones initiating a lot of these yeah, rotations, yeah. but they are picking up the timers that they want. So Mickey and Hans Sama move top as Void Grove spawn. Cool, you're gonna be able to get that. Because Labrov had to reset, He's only just coming back into the map, which means that the timer for you to try and move and trade for Dragon isn't really there because you'll end up giving over a lot of time to G2 to start to put pressure onto the top tier one, whereas you're just a Varus. BB should be able to relatively easily clear out this wave on the bottom side and deny some of that from us. Once again, just the casual experience of this game. Solo landing is Broken Blade has to take the range. It's good damage coming out, but Broken Blade can absorb a Shao is thinking about what he can do bot side. Remember as well, while we're talking about the chaos of these side lanes, constantly switching up. Shao is massively in the lead. He picked up an early kill. He's also got a CS advantage because Yike was constantly bullied in his own jungle. 
I guess I should also talk about LeBron being mid again as well, shouldn't I? Because Nuke's getting extra attention with Caps getting pushed back, while LeBron is using that jungle pressure from Shea that he's exerting while he's doing Dragon to consistently push in and be a nuisance all over the map. But the thing is, when you're playing a double AD carry bot lane, you are the ones that need to snowball. Yeah. And because G2 are constantly dodging this matchup, it's actually Hansam and Mickey who are getting more plates, getting the control on the map, and you're not going to end up in a position where Ice and Lavrov just start to fall off because as we get to the later portions and team fights, Mickey just offers more in a team fight with the Lulu than the Ash does. So again, you're going to get this reset coming through, and I think Ice and Lavrov have read this relatively well. They're not going to try and go top; Whoa. they're just going to go and match bot lane and hope that they see Hansam and Mickey come down to this area of the map. Just waiting to see if Hansam and Mickey maybe read the read, you know? Because right yeah, now it's like quite four-dimensional chess, isn't it? But they're going mid. So if you actually look, BB, Hans, deep. and Mickey are all going mid and going right. Wherever they show first, we go the opposite side. And uh -huh. look, second bar shows on bot side. Mickey's like, I'm off top. See you wow. later, lads. Don't want anything to and, do and with Mickey you. Mickey as well can speed up Hansam to get to lane, so he's not missing anything as well. So again, I mean, G2 are playing the dosi do even though, just to confirm that BDS made such aggressive plays early on and had the lead. As Dak just talking about, if they can't play the 2v2, then G2 again are going to play them. Adam going to get damage here, and Mickey actually does quite a lot here on the Lulu. Nice little polymorph to follow up as well. Adam looks for the turn, but won't find it. As now Yike is up here just in case as well. Now, I do want to say BDS are definitely the lead and potentially looking at a dive on the bottom side of the map. It's just G2 trying to make sure they can scale in this game. But BB, I think you die here, bud. The wave should be cleared out almost at the very least. Badge, you said Chains Corruption, everything launched into him. He's dead. Number one here for BDS. Now the next wave is crashing in as well and it should be a plate. But as BDS commit to bot side, mid gets pushed in, going to be reacted to by Adam. But top again, Dagda. Top in the 2v2. Look at what Han Summer's doing. And they also got grubs. So I think you're, you're a very intelligent man. We all know that. But to affirm your point, it's not like G2 aren't trading and not uh, minimizing or even maximizing on that gold discrepancy they had before. The thing is, though, because Labrov has been unlocked to play through mid, you are getting a slight lead for Nuke that's opening up in the mid lane. Because you're still getting two kills that are going to ice, that lead is still there for ice. Yep. But the main point is that you want to be trading on terrors. You want to be able to play on the map stays with this composition from BDS, specifically the double AD carry bot lane. But because G2 are basically running around the map and denying them, they're actually getting the map pressure that they want. And in that position, then they're going to be able to play for team fights. They're going to be able to play for these objectives off of having more control of the map. And that's where their composition was. I mean, the scaling's insane, right? Plus, you have a dedicated tank, so. Further to that point, as they base once more, just trying to see where they go. They're going back topside by the waves. Wave gets pushed in. Caps playing extra cautious around Shea, who's now level six as well, as Lebrov is making the movement too. Now that's because in 30 seconds, the next bit of grubs will come up, as Mickey might be caught out here. Lebrov not level six, but Sky Splitter does only a bit of damage while Lebrov pokes Mickey from afar. Well, you can see the bottom side actually broken. Blade's getting time with the turret as well. Ice has moved up here, Dagda. And so BB is just getting the shove in. Yeah, they want to try and match the duo of G2, and now you're overextended as Hansama. He's got cleanse available. We're just waiting to see what it's going to be used for. Pokes out first. He gets shielded up, and Sky Splitter again. Good damage here, up to half HP. But watch the reset. BB's already gone back, so he's going to start to move up towards top side. Has the ultimate available as well. So if you try and go for the dive as BDS, suddenly you got to sign on this ultimate into that top side as well. So G2 doing well to cover, but BDS, because of Hansama overextending, get the poke that they need. Now they're onto the Void Grub, so matching that objective control. And you're still getting Nuke totally fine in the mid lane. Just being able to shove in. He's got a turret play for himself. Yep. And this mid lane, slowly but surely, Nuke is getting an advantage. And thanks to Picture in Picture, we can see Adam also getting access to those turret plates. And how much can he get? Because he might have teleport, might have to use it depending on what happens here. BDS were hovering around Grubs, but no longer. Ice and LeBrov looks like they just want to poke out as it's succeeded to, to G2. And that means we're going to get five here for G2 while that's going down. And again, more plates are taken. So it's like, again, a handful. What are we trading off? Uh, that's the thing. I actually like this trade from BDS. They're like, we don't see Scion. Screw trying to fight. This yep. could easily turn into something that we don't want it to. So we're like, cool. We'll take our advantages. We'll get the plates on the bot side. Adam now has a decent, like, look at your, the middle of your screen. You're seeing every single lane is a gold lead for BDS right now. And that's going to be massive, especially as you see Dragon start to come through. Adam, move back top side. You're going to have Ice who's able to reach. Set. He's gonna move in. They're actually trying to stop. Here comes the rocket. Oh. I think it connects. Does it stop uh, this? He's out oh, in time. Just but, but it was on the right spot. Yeah, trying to interrupt the tempo that BDS are playing for, which is rotate back boss, shove out this bot wave, then transition into dragons and play for dragon stacking. 
off of the advantages that you have. Now, we'll say, even though the back was interrupted, and even though we're talking about set up a dragon, first tower does go down to G2, and look at Bot. Remember, five grubs were taken here as well, so more gold and tower plating for Han Sama. I know, Dagger, the early game, for a lot of our viewers, like, this is very uncharted territory, right? Like, this is a very different type of game. But in the early game, we talked about it. The 2v2 was important. It was darted around by G2. And to get you up to stock here, G2 have caught back up to a degree. It's a 1k gold disadvantage. But again, BDS still got a lot within the lanes. There's still a lot of power, especially on these one items we need to add. With things like Varus, Aatrox, and especially the Volley Bear, as Dragon will be spawning right about now. But this is what you're seeing as this push comes in on the bottom side of the map. That's when the dragon is going to be started up. Yep. You're also seeing push in mid. And oftentimes, Caps has to try and go the long way around because he just doesn't quite know where the enemy oh. opposition is. But here's the TP into bot to try and disrupt the play. Going to be forced. It's Caps coming in. Chance corruption too early. It's actually BB and Caps coming through. The charge follows through. They go for LeBron first. So the Magnus Storm used. And Mickey somehow picks up the kill. But nevertheless, G2 fight fire with fire as Adam is again plate hunting in the top line. I think this was a mistake from BDS. I think he needs the TP and Adam to the tower at the same time so then you can try and find the fight. Yeah. With G2 now getting this dragon, they're able to slow down the aggressive plays from BDS. Yes, you'll get terror traded, but G2 are denying the dragon stacking and all they want to do is find a way to slow down the pace of the game to get uh -oh. to two and a half, three items and maybe yeah. take Flash a bit more here. Bring it. Let's just see if anything's used. The astral flight as well follows up and remember the arrow on the other side from the ball comes through, but let the sky fall once more onto ice and the shutdown over to BB as well. GT's. GT creeping up. You mentioned the teleport's coming in, but it's you too late. He bops him out into the corner, separates G2, and it might be enough. Now Adam is splitting skies of his own as Decimating Smash gets him away from Han Sala, but he's separated without a support by himself. He'll give a reset over to Adam. On the other side of the fight, Ice and LeBron both died, but... Hey, it's a fight nevertheless right in BDS's jungle. Yeah, Caps just about managed to finish off Labrov at the end of that. With the TPs coming through, though, BDS able to find some fight back off it. You already got some of the plates in topside. You've got plates for Nuke in the mid lane as well. So the over-aggression from G2, they thought maybe they could finish this out, but it all goes completely astray. They end up chasing onto Sheo. Sheo still has ult. He's not really going to fall to this. And it's a great ultimate from Caps, don't get me wrong. It sets up for the pick on towards Ice. But after that, they are way too far overextended and they've invested everything to kill Ice. So when Nuke goes in, nobody has them. Adam is able to go forward and BDS are able to turn. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of combat Lulu. I don't know if anyone was watching <laughs> Mickey X in that fight, but he literally flashed to get the polymorph, was out of rage, and then wild growth himself. Like, screw 80 carries what when you got Mickey on your team. That's my goat. <laughs> is he playing Nautilus or Lulu? We can't tell the difference, but as we come back to live, a turret goes down as G2, who had been able to pick up 2-0 to zero and plates in their favor as well in this game. BDS now taking the Herald in the top side while Adam is trying to get a turret of his own. Now that it's squishier past the 14-minute mark, BDS is still able to maintain that 1k. And now they should be able to as well. Reset, look for plays on bot. G2 trying to trade pressure on Rift Herald for mid lane oh, though. BB Drift King. Okay, onto LeBrob. No, he's out of range. He can't control it. So he just goes behind enemy lines instead. Blast going there on Herald at 1900. His Jake has the advantage. He's got the eye shattering strike and a steal. BDS have to walk away from it in G2 just with an ultra yoink. The fact that BB has been so willing to drop waves and drop his CS to make these plays is why G2 are able to find these moments. Great. Nuke was pushing on bot side. They didn't have TP. The G2 are like, cool, screw the terror top lane, screw the CS. BB's going to be able to come in mid and we're able to push them off. But again, you got the terror top. You should be able to get the terror bot here with uh, Nuke as well. So for G2, you need to try and crack open mid lane turret to get something back for yourself on the map. You already have both side terrors down, so at least the moment you're ahead in the turret game when it comes to this, but caps. Nuke with the all in, the swoop and boop as Dagger would like to call it, but the old in response, Nuke on the turret, will we trade it? Yes, he will. The Dex Rocket as well gets rid of the minion wave, so Adam can't get the turret, while BDS ended up getting trade on, and that's huge for yeah. G2 in the defensive play. Yeah, they're gonna look for the pick on Yike, I think. You got Shea who's gonna steal red buff, you got push in mid for ice, and taking over this bot side jungle to drop buy space here for Adam to take this bot lane turret. Works out well. BB, though, already putting the threat onto the tier two, so BDS will have to try and reset. Nuke isn't up for a couple of seconds, and someone will need to deal with that, especially, as I was about to say, the demolish and the five stacks of the Void Grubs. This terror will fall despite the fact he's a tank. It's been so to and fro. Arrow gonna stop him at least. Hang on, BDS are actually coming in, so BB, without ulti available, has to pay respect. I was gonna say, you either do the boss, 
and you just die for it or Does you still go walk away good question the dot is uh quite large actually just expired but no i think it's another wave needed dagged up at the very least it is a standing turret if only by breath alone so let's take stock of where we're at, right? Because I think it's been a bit all over the place. Adam, huge. BB has been sacrificing the good of himself to try and get G2 into a position where they can match a lot of the early pressure or keep yep. in uh, touching distance. And it has meant that Adam is going to be a major factor when we come into these team fights, especially if he can get access onto the back line. But the map state is kind of in favor of G2. They're the ones that have the terror advantage. They still have the Rift Herald. And all they're trying to do here is group up around the mid lane to force that Rift Herald play in towards the mid lane tower, because that's the last the outer one, which is why you're seeing four members of BDS starting to group onto this mid lane structure. But at the moment, G2, they need to get their sides in order before they go for this play. Draw members of BDS away from the mid lane for the Rift Herald to play. It's uh, a Herald that's in waiting, isn't it? I mean, for Yike to open up mid, it's gonna require a lot more than the charge itself. Now, if you know Dagda, you know that he likes pointing, and what he just did is point to the top right, because Dragon's up, in 15 seconds. Very well pointed deck. The second one it would be for either of these teams. One apiece so far. So it's not like we have solid dragon stacking as G2 now. Come to join for the mid wave. Caps is top, but he has teleport available. I'm just looking there because it might be able to try to find a turret with Adam even moving up and then move to this play. It's the G2 classic though. They don't really want a team fight right okay. now. They know how strong Ice is. They know how strong Adam is. So they're like, cool. That top tower is really, really low. Let's just try and make a play for that. They're going to invade into top side. Uh, for us, the disconnect here from BDS on mid lane into the top tier two. Yeah. And maybe even look for the pick on Labrov if he goes too far, but there's that trade. But like second dragon, a cloud, doesn't really matter for BDS. We're interested in fighting third, fourth. Let's just try and get as much gold into our pockets before we get to that point. I mean, again, if we're talking about gold, still 1,000 gold behind, but again, it's that trailing for the early game. And I think we, we set it out nicely in the early game, Dagger, at least you did, you know, talking about the strength of ice. Well, we haven't seen it yet, but we know this virus is strong. We know that Han Summer has given himself a bit more time with that set early game, almost to his second item as well. And we talked about the team fighting a G2 in this game one. We know what it's going to be. And we know that it's going to be reliance on caps. Han Summer for the damage and how they can survive with the tools available. Broken Blade right now sitting here by himself. Shao is trying to punish that, but I'm not sure if he can. That is a tanky boy. We do need to keep our eyes on Labrov, though, because a lot of what they're going to try and do now is look for these picks with the Ash. Uh -huh. The game is kind of settled into a position where both teams are trying to spread out on the map. They're trying to look for some of these terrors, get advantages on the wave. Yep. And that's where Shao and Labrov can work together to play for Adam onto BB, because BB's so far behind. Maybe look for Caps, who's very vulnerable if Nuke is able to get that swoop and boop. So there's a lot of plays you can make, but step one for BDS is mid-wave control into these side lanes. But with the mid terror up, Hans Sam and Mickey are relatively fine to just farm underneath this structure and make it a little bit more difficult for BDS to enter onto the map because that Rift Herald still exists for G2. And you know what's a brilliant point about yours about the pick as well? You look at some of the deep wards in G2's jungle, information on who is where at all times, right? Knowing where G2 are rotating so you can make a more successful pick and BDS can open up the map more. I like it, Dagda, but as we get the Herald down in mid, we're just waiting for that charge and the range from G2 that won't bother stepping up because it's way too dangerous. So Herald gets damage done, but mid turret still stands here as we crest towards the 20-minute mark. It nuke knew that he didn't really need to be there. He stayed on bot side, farmed the gold that he needed for his Leandris, and now going to enter back onto the map, Good especially runs. with 20 minutes. Yep. Just starting to crest over. You don't have crazy Baron take here for BDS, so they won't be able to rush it down, but it will give them the moment where potentially they could group up on the mid wave. Going to back away though. I think again, you're stronger as BDS when you can play for sides right now because Labrov can use that ult to constantly fish for picks. But actually, <laughs> in the res the response, Hans Hammer just ulted Labrov to stop him resetting. So uh, okay. <laughs> a lot of people just tossing ults around the place. I, you know, when, when Jinx was released, I think everyone just thought about the ult, you know, for kills and everything. And it's strange that over the years, we started seeing it, obviously with the buffs to neutrals, that we saw that crazy era of Jinx rockets stealing barons, oh, yeah. stealing dragons. That was obnoxious. But now we see it as like a, a utility tool as well. Okay, are they on Baron? We're going to use it as a scouting tool. Uh, are we going to stop resets and, you know, use this overuse word, which is tempo, to get ourselves on the map? It's always interesting. As now as I speak of tempo, I want to note that Baron is up, folks. Of course, it's past 20 minute mark. Right now, no one really scouring vision around it, looking at it. Dragon is two minutes away as well. So it's just about who can get the resources 
build up those items towards what is ultimately an upcoming fight. When you look at BDS, though, what they want to try and do is get a nice line drawn onto this side of the map. The line. So that then you can always play aggressive here as the Azir onto this bot lane turret. But the, you can see how if much uh, his defense is coming through, actually, as I hold on to that. You're okay. BB. It's just BB for the time being. If he gets yoinked back in, it's just LeBrov with the damage as well. Dagger, if you want to do more drawing, I'm all here <laughs> for it. But for now, BDS are drawing their own pathway in. You look off that pick off the side, or at least the attempt, and seeing BB there is double TP for G2 mid. Caps is coming in with a falling star, but uh, that's just to defend mid lane turret, and I guess not give BDS the advantage. And that's what I was going to say is basically what BDS were trying to do was get control over the jungle so then they can push in towards the tier twos. G2 need to respond to that, yep. and then you can open up to rotate on towards the mid lane tower, but with the position that G2 are in, they then blow the double TP, hoping they can find the pick and shut down this pressure. BDS respected though, Ooh. back away, and now we're back into the play on mid though. I mean, the sky's ascend is available, the damage is good onto Ice, but he gets back immediately. You can see again, this engage is not over as Broken Blade runs into a wall. Yike now trying to run into Ice, but it forces them off with mid lane tower, but let's not forget this game has been trading back and forth since minute one. Top side, Adam gets a turret, opens, pushes, adds pressure of his own, and Nuke is doing the same bot here with everyone from G2 spotted mid. And this is why I like it from BDS. They are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the macro play that G2 are going for, saying, hey, we will take the tier two. Mid going down does suck a little bit, but it's, you know, how much of an advantage can you really get here? Hansama isn't able to approach mid wave properly, so shoving in mid to then have access to open up Mickey to roam to sides isn't really a thing. So in the grand scheme of things, you're going to have this Dragon in 20 seconds. You're going to have these resets. Ice and Labrock can still aggressively shove mid. You can still contest for Dragon. And BDS can look to try and close the game in that way. I think the comparison is a vacuum cleaner versus an aeroplane, Dagda. You know, what's going to suck more? Like a hole in the aeroplane? I was going to say but definitely an aeroplane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as strong as your through. vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> Airplanes fly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about a hole in it. You know, you're up 30,000, 40,000 feet. There's a hole in the side of the aeroplane versus a small vacuum cleaner, right? Obviously, I know which one I would like to experience. Especially if you're I flying, I, I should have brought that up. Of a plane, I was <laughs> yeah, that does suck as well. Uh, Arrow did fly through. Now, Lebrov has cooldown reduction to a degree, but not to the most part. That's still off the cooldown. Yike now trying to pull in Shao, but he runs out as well. We're five manning mid. Note that Nuke is topside towards this barren area, so BDS oh. have to disengage as Ice uses Chains of Corruption. Caps holds onto the Sky's Ascenders. It extends over to Mickey, and good damage from Adam. The drawback as well, but Adam walking up almost to his detriment. BDS get tagged off the back end, but so does Mickey here as Dragon is up and staring them in the face. G2 don't feel comfortable to commit to the play, and I thought maybe they just go with the Sky's Ascend onto Ice, get that flash out, but with Ice being this low, he's going to have to play very respectful well, anyway. Mickey they keep looking for the yeah, Mickey's, they know he's gone. But I don't know if you can really do particularly much here for BDS. You've been trying to play at range with Ice, with Labrov as well, just looking for that poke. But, gonna have to keep this one a little bit slow still, I think. Broken Blade, the Lumberjack, just running into a man with a big chopping sword. Arrow flies through, not sure where it was going, but it's now down again. You are gonna get tagged out as well. BDS are definitely the healthier ones, apart from Ice, who now eats the lettuce. And it's really good protein, apparently. Actually, it's not. Don't listen to me. Lettuce doesn't have protein in it. I it's think. very hydrating. Yeah, it's hydrating. There you go. More important here. Wave clear from G2 comes through again. There's the flash. And the Magnus Storm as well, not hitting. Yike, a bit of a whiff. His teleport comes through. But G2 are already on the back end of this fight, even without Adam coming in. Yike is down. That's an engage tool as the World Ender flies through. For BDS starting this one off big in the series, would open it up. But the skies fall once over as Caps now gets out of range. Sky Splitter tags him off. Mickey, speaking of getting tagged, he's getting run down by Ice. Just out of range, if only just the Yomu's pop. Here we go again. Broken Blade running in, charging, saving his life. The hero lumberjack they needed is there, but BDS, as they start the Baron, are going to try and run this down. Maybe CP'd in. G2 want to try and uh, get this play. Ice being dead is massive. They want to make sure they can get caps in, but no TP. And this rocket. Baron's going Hunt down Hunt Summer has rocket. Hunt Summer has rocket. It comes in, but no steal. They're going to try and Level. burst it down with the stun coming through as well. Caps can't get in. He has to watch. It goes down to BDS. The Baron flushed away from as well, and Shao also survives. That arrow from LeBron made it just save the extra play. The fact that he manages to connect onto Caps means that he cannot set up in the front of the pit as soon as he wants to, and then it's abandoned pit for the rest of BDS. But Dragon is still there. G2 will get something. But that was so close to being BDS blowing open this game. The Baron 
should definitely help them oh, in no. getting some of these terrors, but we see it here. Nuke flashes immediately as Yike goes in with the flash Q. Yike then goes for the crash down, but there's no one there, so he's overextended. They yep. finish him off. I'm a jungler down. G2 know that they have to try and run. Labarov's doing a great job of finding those slows, but the overextension then on bot lane from Ice, little bit of an unhappy play as Mickey has the happy feet to escape away from him. Yeah, definitely unhappy play for sure, because now with Baron BDS has lost all sound. Oh, we're back. Never mind. We were giving a silent thought for G2 in this game one because it's looking very BDS favored all of a sudden. It's a 5k gold lead just about. The Baron power play is racking up the points as well with the inner turret getting shredded down by that Caps, super mega cap. And while Cap's getting caught out, he goes golden chains of corruption there, but Cap is not going to be dropping down. The singularity follows through Dagda. This is a turnabout for G2 if Shao can't get out of there. He's getting chased up as Broken Blade holds his in, but Adam now to flank and the Falling Star helps out, but yike, way the too heal. deep again. Adam heals on up. You said it perfectly. He won't die here. LeBrov also poking out, and G2 can't finish the job. The stun turret, an absolute nuisance. And again, BDS managed to walk away with an advantage. G2 toss everything onto the Volley Bear, who gets the ult, who gets the Sunder Sky, who gets the Frenzy Maul heal as well, and just does not go down. He just barely managed to escape, and then Adam as well. The healing, keeping him topped up. The terror goes down. They get a kill in response and BDS back out onto the map faster. They want to start making sure no one in G2 can get out of this, but we're going to catch it in the replays. Oh, again. Engage onto Cap. Shao immediately with the follow-up, but the Caps goes golden, prevents really any sort of follow-up. But then as Shao runs back through the terror, Nuke is able to finish it off. But everyone on G2 is focusing Shao. And then watch, gets the ult, gets the heal, gets the Sunder Sky through. All the healing keeping him top up. As the rest of BDS then, we have to focus on damaging Yike in the back line. Now the BDS, back. the poke oh, is there. Caps. Corruption hits on the Caps. Remember, he used the Zonis in the last play. Half HP, but again, not able to finish the job. It's the only shining light for G2 at this point because the rest is BDS favored. Man, we're talking about a curse here. We're talking about BDS in winter not being able to pick up a game in this upper bracket final. But this must be a new BDS because game one is looking red hot for them to open things up. 18 to 3 has been the scoreline between these two teams to then immediately come in a BDS, a statement game. It was not down to We Will Team Fight, it was down to We Will Match You on the map. But and now BDS, yet. they need to match still G2 when it comes to the damage. And at the moment, they will back away. But they got what they came for. They definitely did. It was a 3k Baron power play. The gold lead on top of your screen is at 6,000. While G2 can, yes, play the mid game well. I mean, still for BDS, they are a great team fighting team. It is how they've won games. Cast your mind back to the Vitality series of this set playoffs. And there's a game in there you're like, hang on a minute. Should BDS have won that? It's a great team fight again. That sealed the deal on the best of three. So again, you have faith in BDS so far. But we'll have to see, because Dagda Dragon's coming up in a minute 45. We chill out for a bit before the Baron. That spawns about 40 seconds after it. I want to point out as well, we've got Han Summer with three items now. So the Jinx is coming online. Yeah, it also gives a lot of wave clear with the build that Han Sam has gone for, right? Having the Runin's Hurricane is going to be great. The, uh, well. it, the biggest problem, though, is that you're just being forced into your base. Yep. You get outranged by BDS as well with Ice, with Lab Robin, and even Nuke being able to just take pop shots to the terrorists. G2 kind of need to play up aggressive like you're seeing. Find, get BDS before they can approach onto the terrorists, but as long as you're keeping G2 back in their base, they never get to establish vision yep. for a Dragon, for a Baron. And if I'm BDS, Screw Dragon. Take Baron, <laughs> yeah. crack open the game, and crack open Caps' Ooh, skull. Another apparently. arrow, another arrow. LeBrov is hitting him again. Flash away from Caps, and he's on a flight path. Maybe he's going home. I'm not sure. For G2, they get out safely, but again, it's just these arrows from LeBrov. Even if they're off screen, this dude is hitting them. Left, right, and center. And I'm getting the Blitzcrank vibes again. You know, as we saw last split, like LeBrov, every Blitzcrank hook, someone needs to check his PC. I think after this game again, I'm just going to look over to the stage. It is, it is LeBrov. It is LeBrov. I can't confirm. <laughs> but again, that, i got to give him respect. I, I know it was him because, like I said, last split, he was popping off on Blitzcrank. One of the best engaged pick supports here in the LEC I've found at the start of this year. And every time he lands on the Caps, you see Zonya's used last time. Flash used this time as well. Caps does have the Zonya's for the next route, but remember again, without that Flash, if he gets caught out and locked down with CC, he's dead. G2 just spotted, I think, the Labrov wanted to reset, so oh, that's yeah. why they're starting to play aggressive in the mid wave. He started to recall on a ward, placed the pink, cleared it out, and now G2 say, hey, you don't have the numbers advantage. Ice, 
Also in a wedge of nice, but I don't think they're quite able to capitalize on it just yet. Will give themselves mid control though, as they start to move and drift in towards this dragon here. Broken Blade is tanky enough. Three items for this guy as well, and he's got Jack shows, so staying in combat is such a plus for him. Trying to poke them out as G2 walking in. Remember, the Skies Descend is back up available for Caps as well. On this four item now, Aurelian Soul with Crypt Bloom just picked up. BDS trying to do their best to hold this way. We're looking at side lanes. They're pushing in and pressuring, but maybe it doesn't matter. Onslaught, Onslaught coming through onto Ice. It's Broken Blade in the back line, and he takes the chance. Corruption while Adam is getting poked. They're playing front to back. G2 again, the front to back. A Death Rocket again. Excitement from Han Summer. G2 are allowed to play their game as the Skies will fall. I can hear Adele once more. G2 have been given the game that they shouldn't have been given. BDS walk into their trap, walk into their front line, and now walk in the cabs. You can never doubt them, can you? It's just a G2 thing. The second the Edge of Knights are burnt onto BDS, G2 pull the trigger. They get it on Ice, they get it on Adam, they get it off of Labrov, and they go in immediately. New spot on the ward, though. He's in no man's land. He is. He's got Yikes flash available. How can he get out? I mean, teleport there, and they're not going to chase him. They're going for the Baron instead. Dagda, I hope I didn't curse BDS talking about how good their team fights are. But it is just comical at this point. It doesn't matter if it's regular season or playoffs. How are G2 able to turn games around that feel like they have no business being turned around, scaling or not? I don't care. G2 are back in this game, and 3K now the difference, and we'll watch it again. But that's the thing, right? Ice, no Edge of Night. Immediate engage from BB. You see Adam loses his Edge of Night. Immediate engage from yeah. Yike. They're playing off of these timers as soon as that item is expired. That's when they're going in, and the chase down is massive. Caps having the skies descend. That AOE slow is huge because not only does it get Labrov, it slows Sheo enough for Mickey True. able to speed up. Or well, flash in, Polymorph, slow, set up for the rest of G2. Oh, and it's no. just overextension from BDS. They yep. didn't need to take that fight. They wanted to try and play it slow, but Handsome and Caps so well protected. They're just able to find that moment to fight back. While I'm, you know, talking about reliving the past and seeing G2 just win another fight in, in a game that maybe they shouldn't be looking to win, we have to be real. We talked about the scaling caps there in the last fight. 7,000 damage on this Aurelian Soul, 400 stacks picked up. Also, Han Sama is starting to beef up a bit with the damage numbers as well. Just looks so minimal because caps took over the damage charts. But it's a setup, it's the perfect team fight in G2 now. They picked up the Dragon putting us on a three minute timer until Sol. BDS are looking for a pick themselves, but G2 have numbers advantage down here. Dagger, I'm just looking at those teleports again. Nuke can join in, Caps can join in, Broken Blade and Adam can also join in. So this can turn into a 5v5 at any given moment. It's as soon as Cap shows on this our top wave. That's, I think, where BDS might try and look. Labrov has the ultimate if he wants to. Caps has TP available, but they might be able to pick someone off just beforehand. They're trying to spot it out. I mean, Baron is up on the top side of the map. It's rare to see teams forcing so heavy on the bot side. Cap's still holding off mid. You gets tagged down as well. Adam is going off to La La Land himself. Wonder what it's like over there as Yike is trying He's to play between. He doesn't realize Adam has to back away, trying to wrap in behind G2 and catch him Ooh, off guard. Yeah, but... Here's Caps. Crash down as well. Astral Flight, Magnet Storm. A sky falls once more. Adam is going to get tagged out. He almost survived it, but his nuke flies on in. The stun from LeBron helps out. He gets auto attacks. Sonya's down as well, but Hansama here to help out. Nuke's ulti is good as well. Sends Yike away. The space build as Hansama flashes over, you maniac! Absolute monster! Putting on absolute cinema. BDS lose two. G2 with one. They're the ones with Baron, and even though Nuke saves the day, Han Sama starts feeling himself on this Jinx. G2 just feel absolute BDS. They're trying desperately to keep them off the towers, but nobody kills Sion when Sion is this big and ice. A lethality virus tickling as best he can. But Mickey, not so lucky. Taking a bit Han of damage. Han Sama is excited. He gets excited off inhibitors now. Remember, Shao going to get tagged away. The range is there. Minion wave coming in. BDS are behind this, and G2 are just looking for the end. 35 minutes in as Adam is up in five seconds, but it won't not matter. Hunt Summer keeps getting excited, 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 excited. He's gone. He's cleansed. He's dead. Mickey now left alone, and he too 
will drop. G2 got excited, Tipping looking the for the end. And the TP in front means that G2 might get punished hard. Running forward, Broken Blade is interrupted, and Adam is also going to stop him in his tracks. Top lane has battled out, and as frustrating as it is to try and kill this Scion, PDS need to do it quick because so many members are there, but Cap's coming through. Sends a falling star down. Adam as well getting tagged around and gets executed. The ulti from Yike as well sends up another. I thought PDS were going to switch it around again. Nuke TP to the bottom wave and didn't decide to join. Oh. And now Labrov has to flash away. His nuke is there. Can the they kill Caps? Wait, 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 wait. Caps is huge. Caps is huge. Sends in the singularity. Flashes away from the Empress Divide. Yike is jumping over the wall. Gets a star. And look at the text. Aurelian Soul has not only scaled, he has consumed the world. And look at the death timers. 30 seconds on Adam, 50 seconds on Tanuk, and a soul on the table in 30 seconds for G2. That was the moment where BDS could have fought back. They thought they had the win, but they didn't coordinate. They didn't join up, and G2, that moment of hesitation from BDS is punished. Well, round two, teleport comes in, electric boogaloo. Hey, this is like round 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. It's just round two with the base. If we put a timer or a tag down everywhere, we've had a fight, it'd be different pieces. G2 now charge on in. Fired members up. Nuke is not up for 20 seconds to help this defense. It is a numbers mismatch as Ice has to poke them down, but Broken Blade won't let it. Sets the engage into Shea, who Stormbringer's out in the back. And remember, you need Han Summer. You need Caps. That's a start with some of the damage as World Ender from Adam, but his Edge of Night has been popped again. Poke doesn't reach from Ice as Adam continues to chase on down, but the movement speed's too much. Dragon's up. It's an easy soul for G2. That would be greedy, maybe silly, if they got caught at the face again. Arrow hit the Scion, means nothing. Nuke has just respawned, so they're going to start to push in mid. And BDS, they will trade Dragon for Vision Control over the Baron. Yep. Waves have been slamming themselves into this topside turret of G2 for a little bit of time, but you're not really going to be able to punish that as BDS. But if you can find that pick, you can find that moment, BDS, they can definitely come back. You're looking at an near full build for Nuke. He's one item away from that, but the problem is that, as you rightly pointed to yourself on the screen, Hansama, Nerdy at full build as well, oh, yeah. having picked up the last Whisper. And this is where he's just going to be able to tear through so much the front line from BDS. But this lethality is just not getting the value you need against the tanky stats G2 now have available. I mean, the damage is now shredding through any portion of Bruiser you have on BDS. I mean, Mickey's got Zaza. He's also got all the other buffs of the Ardent Sensor on Han Sama. I'm just waiting for that last Whisper to upgrade. And we'll see after we come back from the gold graph again. The game that should have been BDS is thrown away, and Han Summer, he's now here to stay. He's full build. Full build on Jinx as Baron now spawns. No other timer coincides with it. And remember, broken inhibitor on the bottom side, that wave is eventually going to become a problem. So G2 are playing. No, they're not playing patient. Not at all. They're just finding a pick up the Shao. Stormbringer out as Yikes Angle. Actually, really good. Magnus Storm on the nuke. He has to disengage at half HP. The skies now descend again. The damage is just busted. He flies on in, gets stopped by a couple of soldiers. But what are soldiers? to a god. It's LeBron running for his life. It's unfair. It's disgusting. You turn away. No one can look at it because Caps now runs the map, runs the world, and G2 run the heads of BDS. They are mind controlling them. Adam's going to resurrect, but Caps went golden to stay alive and set up a potential quadra. Ticking away. There it is. Where's my Penta? Give it to me, he says. He cries, he flies, he chases, and G2 thrive. Look at Shao on his deathbed. Look at the Penta being set up. He won't give it to him, but another flight. We look in the picture and picture. We wait for Caps to get a Penta in the upper bracket final. We're at least seconds away, Shao. Just give it to him. And finally, finally, Caps has shown how much in BS's head he truly is well-deserved pentakill. Aurelian Sol has landed in the LEC, and Caps has a big old grin about that fact, but it is heads down for BDS. That was a hard-fought game. They matched G2 so well. They started to get that lead, but a couple of mistakes back-to-back, back and G2 punish. Somehow, some way, G2 just keep doing the same damn thing every damn day. We'll go to a short break, but when we return, let's see if BDS can pump it up again for a second game.
like that was my oh, best wait, intro ever. Into it, yeah. yeah, not Impressive. bad, hey, not bad. Same. I can get pro. Yeah. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. And a crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut.